Well, hello. Welcome back to Survival Saturday with Johnny Tiger on April 3rd, 2021. As you can see, we are following uh, the kitten's nursery today, my old training room. God, I miss my training room. Uh, because what I'm going to do today, I will require the help of my ever faithful training dummy, training partner, good old Bruce over here. Because I don't have a live training partner right now because I've killed every single one of them. No, no. <laughs> um, actually, because of the pandemic. So I don't have any live training partner to get on video. Uh, so we are going to have make do with Bruce. So uh, we have been talking about this video uh, that it, you can see in the uh, description where I'm going to put the link. Video code is Krav Maga as useless as Aikido. Uh, and we have already addressed it in the previous two episodes. Uh, and we are probably going to still be on this topic for another two or three episodes. I can't believe I'm spending five episodes in total uh, talking, responding, reacting to a five minute long video. But I think in the end, uh, at least I hope, this will be very beneficial to people uh, who might be thinking about training in Krav Maga and have been on the fence because of a video like that. And, and I hope it will be beneficial to people who have trained in some form of Krav Maga but might not have learned some of the more legit uh, form of Krav Maga and give you an idea of what it should, be, uh, what it should look like. Um, so, we are going to be uh, in the training room. We got Aslan sitting right here in his cage. Uh, he's probably going to start whining in a little bit. So if you guys suddenly hear uh, him making a lot of noises, <laughs> that's uh, it's okay. He just does that. Uh, no one's torturing him or anything. So today I'm going to focus on one of the points, one of the big issues I have with the original poster of the video is Krav Maga as useless as Aikido. Uh, one of the big problems I have mentioned is that he did his research by watching a lot, or I don't know how, how many, he said a lot, I don't know how, how many is a lot, uh, of Krav Maga demonstration uh, videos and Krav Maga, uh, Krav Maga sparring videos. Now, last uh, episode we already addressed why do Krav Maga sparring sessions just look like bad mixed martial art, bad MMA, bad Jiu Jitsu? Uh, it's done that way on purpose. It's intentionally done that way. We do not pretend that we are training to go fight in the ring. We are uh, training so we can survive in a tough situation. So when we do that MMA stuff, the roundhouse kick, the, the one, two, three, four punch, the five, six punch, the ducking, the weaving around, the dancing around, and the big jujitsu move. That's just us having fun. We're trying to, uh, by going through that sparring and playing and all that stuff, learn how much we can take. If someone kicks us on the leg, someone punches us on the jaw, can we take it? And when we punch them back, can we drop them? I mean, th those are just playtime. Those are not Krav Maga. They're, they're not like... We're not trying to do anything Krav Maga in those times. Now, video, when it comes to demonstration and training video, there is a big, big, big thing uh, that people, most people don't know. Uh, a lot of people uh, have not realized about Krav Maga video is most of them are fakes. Most of them are fakes. Why do I say that? Because we make it so intentionally. You see, one of the things that came up in the early, early stage of Krav Maga and trying to bring Krav Maga to the public is how do we do this without the bad guys learning it? Now, how do we do this without children learning it? and use as their classmate. Because you gotta admit, if 
if a child practices Taekwondo and the school bully come out and ask him for his lunch money and a child go do a roundhouse kick on the bully, that's not quite as uh, traumatic or problematic as if that child watches some Krav Maga technique and the bully come out and demand for his lunch money and he gouges out the eye of the bully, put his thumb right through the eyes and push it right in there and then pull off the ear. Eh? So, as you can imagine, that would be bad. Okay? So we, at the early days of Krav Maga, have come to the conclusion, again, I'm not going to be able to stand here and say this for every Krav Maga organization, but I will tell you this, if it is a legit, reputable Krav Maga organization putting out demonstration videos, drill videos, they will, if uh, for legality's sake, for their uh, being responsible, for responsibility's sake, they will water down about 60% of what they are showing you. That's just the way it is, okay? In fact, every time before we go on stage, before we go demonstrate in public, before we make a demonstration video, we have to practice, 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 practice for two or three weeks. Not practice to uh, do what we do perfectly, but practice to slow down what we do and practice to find a more viewer-friendly way of doing what we do. In another word, we spent two or three weeks practicing the fake stuff so we can show you guys some fake Krav Maga on video, right? This, these are things that a lot of outsiders just don't know. So when people look at these videos, they're like, oh yeah, you don't do that, why would you do that? We wouldn't. It's just what we have to do to keep things legal, to uh, avoid liability. So we don't have people coming back to us and say, my son watched your video, and then when he and his brother are fighting, he suddenly cut his brother's throat. You know, we don't want things like that to happen. Okay, so today, uh, as a little bit of a taboo, because I feel so passionate about this topic, about this guy watching a lot of video and say Krav Maga is uh, useless, right? I'm going to do something that is very rarely done, it's not really encouraged, and honestly, I might end up getting in trouble with my own instructor uh, for doing this. I hope not. I hope not. I, I, I hope uh, you understand my motive here. But I'm going to show you guys an old demonstration video that I did, I took part in uh, years ago. And then I'm going to show you the real moves, how I would do it if I wasn't on video, if I wasn't doing it on stage. So you guys can tell why, why exactly do we water things down, okay? Now, for you guys, uh, the link to the demonstration video is over there in the video description. Uh, for those of you who are watching this, uh, if you are visually impaired or blind, I'm going to attempt my best at describing what I'm doing, right? Uh, if you have questions, don't, uh, uh, don't, don't be shy. Just leave it in the comment section uh, or try to get a hold of me one way or another. So if you haven't, I encourage you to pause this right now and then go watch the demonstration video. Uh, if you are visually impaired or blind, don't bother. Just stick with me, and then I'll try to explain things to you guys. But for you guys who have eyesight, watch, uh, go watch that uh, demonstration video first, and then come back to this video. Now, because that demonstration was done so many years ago, I, I and since I'm totally blind, I can't even watch it to refresh my memory, uh, I'm not going to be able to replicate it move by move what we did, but I have a very 
good idea. So I, I think I can uh, show you guys to your satisfaction of what I'm talking about. Okay. So move number one that I showcased on stage is me standing. I'm going to stand a little bit to the left so you guys can hopefully see uh, Bruce as well. So I'm standing uh, casually on stage, like I'm standing uh, at a bar or on the street, and then the attacker come up, grab my shirt, grab my shirt, I'm going to pull his arm across like this, uh, so you guys, I hope you guys can see it, if you guys can't see what's going on, let me know, okay, so, he grabbed my shirt, and the other arm started to smack me upside the head, started punching me in the face, okay, this, and, and he knocked my glasses off uh, my face, and that, that's the, that's what happened, and then I'm going to my move. Now this is approximately what I did on stage. Uh, from his hand on my shirt, I first block his incoming strike with my left hand. My right hand go to his face, pop, come back to his wrist, pull it down. I move behind him, boom, and knee and knee and push him away. Okay. Now, on stage, because we have to make sure that people can actually see what I'm doing, every motion has to be made really big. So that's part of the thing that we have to practice that we would never do in reality. Okay? In reality, well, on stage, this is approximately the kind of hand gesture I would be using. Reach wide, pow, pow, move, big knee, big knee into the belly, push away. That, that is the extent of how wide we have to do things on stage, just so people can see, right? In real life, okay, in real life, it would never look anything like that. In real life, it would more approximately something like, like this. And I walk away while he's all mangled up. Now, let me slow that down so you guys can see what the real thing would be. The real thing is I would never make that big gesture because I don't want them to see. So my real life counter would be one hand blocking, the other hand hitting the wrist, and then I go in, this part is about the same, one hand cradling the back of his neck, the other hand come into for the elbow. But this is where it's different. In real, in a real Krav Maga, I'm not going to bother pulling him in for these big Muay Thai kickboxing knee because that's silly, waste of energy. Okay, I got the back of his neck, I come in close, elbow to the throat, elbow to the throat, finger into the eyes, claw down, rip the whole face down. Okay, that's what I would do. That's a real Kramaga, that's not stage Kramaga, but we can't show that. To kids, right? We can't show that to the general public. Not to mention, you start doing that, no one wants to demonstrate with you because it hurts your partner too much. So, we had to downgrade it to this big parry punch, wrist grab, elbow, and then big Muay Thai knee a few times and push them away. Uh, that's what we have downgraded to for public consumption. Now, situation number two. This one's interesting, okay? Again, I'm doing something for you guys that is very rarely seen. The attacker come up behind me with a knife. See, Bruce has got a knife in his hand with a knife across my throat, okay? Now, on screen, on screen, what I did 
Yes, I pull his knife down to my chest and I shuffle back behind him and I pull his arm up so he drops the knife and I go back into the pit to the head and big uh, Muay Thai knee to the body and then walk away. Okay, that is nothing. That is nothing like what we do in real Krav Maga, right? Real Krav Maga is going to look like this. Guy pulled a knife across my throat. He's behind me. The first part is the same. I grab, I hit his wrist, pull it down on my chest. This is so he can't pull back and cut my throat, by the way. But next part is going to look totally different. As soon as I secure the knife, pop, I go back in. One, two, three, four, duck out. I walk away, he's dead, right? What did I do different? Knife across my throat. I secure the knife and the wrist. This time, rather than worrying about some Aikido looking arm lock behind his back, I just duck under, I duck under his arm. I still hold onto the wrist and the knife and I use momentum, drive the knife into his belly one time, two time, three times, I duck out and then drive the knife right up into the throat. Oh, the whole time, his hand is around the knife. My hand is around his fist. So the fingerprint would be his, right? That's real karma God. That is, uh, again, something we don't usually show the public. Move number three, the third move that I show, this one you have to use a little bit of imagination because I don't have two training on me, but I think you, you'll be able to see my point. Attacker from behind, bear hugging me, holding me tight, and an attacker from in front coming up and punching me in the face. You guys can see that in the video. I'm struggling against the attacker from behind and the person in front of me is hitting me. What did I do in the video, okay, in the video, I kick the person in front in the groin to back them away, and then I drop my weight, hit by the guy behind me, and I duck out and go behind again. Big Muay Thai knee to the belly and all that nonsense, right? That's not how things will go down in real life, right? If I'm doing real Krav Maga, that's the way I'm trained. The person come up behind me, Grab me in a bear hug, and the person in front of me is coming up to attack me, right? In this case, the first move is going to be the same. I'll drop my weight, I'll kick the guy in the front, in the groin, and then head out the guy behind, and as I turn, this is when things are going to look different. Okay? I'm going to head out him, and when he let go, I turn, and And then I go around, deal with the person that was originally in front. Hopefully he's still recovering from a kick to the groin. But what did I do different? What did I do different? Okay, nice and slow. Person in the back, bear hug me, holding me. The person in front, beating the crap out of me. I drop my weight, I kick the person in the front, in the groin, hit by the guy in the back, he let go. I drop and turn, at the same time, I'm not going to worry about fighting fair anymore. I'm not going to worry about kickboxing or MMA. I'm going to worry about there's two of them. So as I turn, I whip out the knife from my pocket, cut up the center, cut across the face, push him away, turn, deal with the original attacker that I just kicked in the groin. Now I have a knife. Now his friend is cut up bleeding behind me. This guy just got kicked in the groin. No problem. I'm not going to worry about boxing them or MMA them. That's nonsense. But again, since we are trying to show people some of the legal stuff, we can't show people that you're going to pull a knife out of your pocket and cut up people that attack you. 
last but not least, okay, guy come up with a gun to my head on screen. I did a kind of a Steven Seagal thing. I snapped the gun out of their hand and twist and pivot and so the gun come free and then I kick them on the leg and now I have the gun. Right? Look cool. But again, it's not how we do it for real. In real life, point a gun at my head, okay? I'm going to pivot my body to get my head out from in front of the barrel. I hit the gun. <laughs> Disable them. Their face is so bashed in. What did I do differently? I didn't worry about the fancy kick, sweeping kick to the leg. I didn't worry about the fancy pivot and disarm. As soon as I get the gun away from my head and get my hand around the gun, I'm going to jump in and smash the barrel the hammer, the barrel, into the face, okay, mess up their face, break their collarbone, hit them in the throat with a gun, okay, that is real Krav Maga versus video Krav Maga. There are countless examples of times when we demonstrate in public that these techniques have to be changed to something that totally not what we actually train in, not what we practice. They're only there for public consumption. I hope today's video at least gives you guys an idea of why we have to do that, why we can't in good conscience show real down-to-earth legit Krav Maga stuff on video on stage because they are just uh, not that good for public consumption. It's easy for someone to take these techniques and uh, accidentally or intentionally hurt someone really, really badly. And also, when we do these for real, it's hard to get a partner to demonstrate with you if you want to bash their face in with a pistol. If you remember, if you look at uh, the demonstration video, we are not wearing any protection. There's no uh, chest plate, there's no uh, helmet, you know, there's no protection when we are demonstrating Krav Maga. The only protection we have on us is the groin cup. Okay, so yeah. Anyway, we'll be back next uh, Tactical Tuesday, and we are going to revisit this topic, and this next time, I'm going to actually uh, talk about some of the more common misnomer about uh, Krav Maga techniques that people hear about, such as the 360 block and the attack and block in synchronized manner and stuff like that. Thank you for checking out today's Survival Saturday. We'll be back again tomorrow for Soul Search Sunday. For now, Have a good night.